you know, we talked about the pandemic stuff earlier, but one thing we didn't really talk about at first, you know, no fans. And then later a little bit of fans. Was it difficult with things like spot calling and talking to people in the rain? Because now the, the you had the camera on, you didn't have the sound of all the audience drowning it out, or you had very few fans there to drown it out. Yeah. I mean, uh, in that instance, you know, you're only doing like five to seven minute matches. So there's not a lot of, of communicating really. It's just like go in there, you get your shit done and go home. <laughs> I, I mean, just in general during that time, not just for the AEW matches, but. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, especially like if you're a baby face and you're trying to rip your comeback and, and get fired up like for real and there's no one there behind you, you're like, man, like I could really use an audience. Oh. You get it because that's where it comes from. You get that, that energy and that, you know, deep within, it comes from the fans a lot of times. And you don't realize that unless you are a baby face or you've only been wrestling so long that that's, that's all that you know. And then when that's taken away, you really understand, like, we need these people. Like, this is why we do this. Like, there are so many days where I was like, holy cow, I realized how much I do this for the audience. I don't do it for me. Like, it's not getting my rocks off. Like, I want to entertain people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Um, it was it was definitely a challenge at first. You it was like you had to shift your mindset a lot. Did you change your style a little bit during that time too? Because again, you're talking about how you can't you can't do the same firing up, or you can, but it's not going to give you the same feeling. So, did you have to shift things like that, or did you kind of just go with I it? Think and... I worked uh, predominantly as a heel actually, and okay. um, so it was. I didn't really have to fire up and be a baby face. That was a challenge when I started with impact. Actually, they're like, you're a baby face. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I was like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, so <laughs> I did definitely work a lot slower. I think I learned, um, you know, less is more sometimes like people know I'm athletic, but that doesn't mean that I have to give them 87 athletic things. <laughs> like we keep it special. We keep it meaningful. Uh, and that's part of learning storytelling over, you know, everything else. Like I see a whole lot of athletes wrestling now, um, a lot of gymnasts, which is cool, right? Like I wasn't the first gymnast ever, but um, I think it's very important to emote and to give an experience, not just like, hey, watch me do a choreographed gymnastics routine. Like I already did that in life. Um, you know, I could put out YouTube videos for that. Like I want to affect humans mm -hmm. i want to make connections um and yeah i want to be an athlete too but um yeah i slowed down i did a lot less but it was definitely harder to do uh more athletic things without an audience to be honest <laughs> i i guess that kind of makes sense too though where you know when there's an audience maybe you might fall into bad habits of wanting that you know quote unquote cheap pop of you know doing something athletic and getting that immediate response while yeah. without the fans there you have more reason to think of the story and not just trying to get the instant gratification yeah for sure that's that's very cool